Hey everybody, welcome to Threat Chens. Uh, Wednesday, let's play. We've got a little bit of a different vibe coming for you today. I'm really excited about this. Now, normally on the channel, we will play Threat Chen Red versus Blue. Either I'll be playing as the red team or the blue team, taking on the AI and either showing you how different cybersecurity frameworks can operate and whether or not they're effective, or how a threat actor would execute in an environment, kind of get that red team vibe. We've also had heads up play. We had the tournament a couple days ago and, or last week, and that was a fantastic thing. But did you know Threat Gen Red versus Blue can excel at also supporting and facilitating incident response tabletop exercises? In this video, in the next 45 minutes to an hour, we are not only going to be breaking down what is a tabletop exercise, what are the pros and cons of it, how would you actually execute one in your environment, and then we're going to go into the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform, and we're going to walk through an actual tabletop exercise. And you in chat, will we're, we're hoping that you can join us on the experience. We're going to be asking you questions, polling the audience, making decisions in the tabletop exercise based on the community's feedback and response. I'll be explaining the decision-making process and how you can really help not just reduce risk for your organization, but ensure your ability to be resilient, especially when you're dealing with a real incident. That All that is coming up next. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. How are you doing, Clint? It's been a week, man, but I'm doing good. Oh, that's fantastic. So in the intro, I talked about how we're going to be jumping into the Threat Gen Red versus Blue. But before we get into the actual gameplay, I'd love to take a few minutes and really discuss why you would do a tabletop and what the value of a tabletop exercise is. So uh, let me just kind of intro it. And then Clint, I'd love to get just a couple thoughts from you on your experience through tabletop exercises. So for those of you who don't know, when you are running an information security program, there is left of boom and there is right of boom. And boom is basically bad stuff happening in your environment. And you can set up all the controls you want and have all the detections you want. But when a threat actor gets in your environment, you know, someone clicks on a fish, someone detonates ransomware, somebody is moving around laterally in your environment. What do you do? That's the boom. And how are you going to respond? Uh, adrenaline can run high. Emotions can run high. There has to be, uh, you know, kind of peripheral things like communication, um, coordination. Do you cut the hard line to the internet? Like, who makes that decision? Who The news is calling. Who speaks to them? There's all sorts of these things going on. And by testing it in a controlled setting, you are going to be able to work through some of those kinks you know, identify those gaps and weaknesses and be able to get into it. I've got a slide coming up where I'm actually going to enumerate pros and cons. But before we get to that slide, Clint, what's your experience with executing tabletops? So uh, in general, um, they it, done properly, they're often effective, but they're also often really dry, pretty boring. But most importantly, I think the biggest problem with tabletops, the reason why people don't do them as often Aside from the fact that it just it's just two to four hours of just kind of talking and, and boredom, mm -hmm. even though they're very valuable, is that they can take days, weeks, up to a month or more to plan. You know, if you're trying to do these specific to your organization, if you're trying to figure out what injects are you going to do, what scenarios are you going to run, what how are you going to run this thing? So it takes a long time to plan. You usually also have to have a very experienced facilitator, someone who knows what they're doing, someone not only who knows what they're doing, but someone who can also keep your participants interested and engaged with a compelling story, with compelling injects, somebody who can kind of roll with the punches and improvisationally or, or impromptu improvisation. I forget which is which anyway, <laughs> but, but you can, but you have to have someone Almost like a dungeon master. If you ever play D&D &D or a role-playing game where you have a game master, you have to be able to anticipate whenever your participants, your players, are going to make an unexpected move, make an unexpected change. And you have to have a contingency for that. So it requires experience not only in cybersecurity, incident response, tabletop exercises, but an experienced storyteller and, and facilitator. So you have all of those things. So quite frankly, in a nutshell, they're difficult. And so 
while you should be doing tabletops more often because they're invaluable for being able to test the efficacy of your cybersecurity plan, your program, in terms of your incident response plan, and in, in how you can uh, – finding problems with your incident response plan, validating it, improving it, should be done regularly. But instead, people do it maybe once a year, if that, because of all of the issues I just talked about before. It's so true. And I've got a slide right here just to pull it up. I personally have done a couple tabletop exercises in my experience. I have found them, even, even with one that's really well planned and really well executed, I have seen numerous problems. Like it's an all day affair and the the business really just didn't get any value. So um, let, like, let me focus on the cons first, right? So it's a simulated event. So it's very, you know, the stakes aren't as high. Like when ransomware is really executing in your environment and you're making that hard call on what to do, there's emotion and energy and you really can't simulate that, right? So that's one thing. Uh, also, as you mentioned, Clint, you know, you have to have a senior person who really um, crafts a good story and can kind of adapt into the in the situation and make it, uh, interesting and realistic at the same time. And if that's not done well, you don't get buy-in. Um, another thing that isn't listed here as a con that I have seen is, unfortunately, management typically is there, but they're on their phone, they're not engaged, it's not interesting. And basically the value of having them understand that they will need to make decisions um, based on you know gapped information uh, that does not really resonate if not done properly. And this is part of the reason I really like the threat gen red versus blue platform for this opportunity is because typically it's not that they don't care. It's that it's not interesting and what's on their phone is interesting, right? Uh, but just really quick too, another, another benefit of why you'd even want to be doing tabletop exercises in your environment. Um, it, it, identifies tribal knowledge gaps and tests your process and knowledge. Guys, I can't tell you, and, and really, you know, think about it, think about it for a second uh, for yourself. A lot of organizations have like one or two people who know everything. The guy who's been there 30 years or the, the go-getter who's like, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll always do it. Right. So then you've got two people who are critical and a lot of other people who kind of know what's going on, but they don't really know how to execute on it. And those people you know, you have to assume that maybe maybe Bob's on vacation or maybe Bob can't be reached. And now you have to, um, you know, like Carl's got to do it, you know, and can Carl actually execute? So by doing tabletop exercises, you identify those gaps and kind of those people who are, even though they're really great contributors, are actually kind of nerfing the rest of the team's ability to get skill. Now, because of ThreatGen's red versus blue platform, you it has high replay value. You can run different simulations, right? You can run the same simulation and it'll be slightly different or you can make different decisions, but you can do it with some high level of frequency. Clint just mentioned, tabletop exercises are typically an annual activity and it's oftentimes because of compliance or because your insurance company requires you to do it in order to get those rates. So you're not really getting that, that value, but by having something like this that you can replay often, you are able to say, okay, you know what, Bob, you're not allowed to speak this entire time. Let's just let the junior analysts speak and see what their decision-making process would look like. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, that's what we're gonna be doing today with the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform together as we step through it. I'm going to be looking at you, chat. So let you get ready to be active and get ready to be engaged in chat as we step through the simulator. Clint, you ready to hop into the tabletop exercise or any final thoughts before we dig in? You know, I think, uh, number one, by the way, I got my tournament shirt on just because I nice. felt that was appropriate. Number two, um, yeah, you know, I think this is quite possibly the first time anyone's ever attempted a live tabletop exercise with a community of, you know, 40 plus people and just letting it run. Yeah. Well, that's what we do here. That's how we roll. We are, we're pioneering here. We're breaking, we're breaking barriers. Uh, I will also mention that there's a couple of things um, that happen during the tabletop that you have to make sure that you're also doing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you end up getting red versus blue and using it for this tabletop exercise, that's cool. But be mindful that you need to do kind of, uh, you have to have a note taker, you have to have uh, like a lessons learned hot wash meeting after the fact happens so you can capture those lessons learned um, and, and, and you know get processes, like if you've identified gaps <clears throat> and stuff, get those filled. However, uh, 
the ThreadGen platform will sort of um, make your note taking easier or re retrospectively kind of looking at it and going, uh, you know, what did we do? Because there is a downloadable report. Uh, excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah, th there's huge, huge value here. All right. So let's get into it. So I'm going to go ahead and launch IR Tabletop. Now, I mentioned this on the Simply Cyber stream this morning. This is a module that is not, you have to get it unlocked, right? So Clint, can we just for a hot second talk about this? Because some people own the Threat Gen Red versus Blue game or they have an account into the professional platform, but they may not see this button. Yeah, that's because uh, the the Tabletop platform edition or module is a separate paid module that you can only get if you are part of a business or an organization if you are an individual and you want to you know experience some scenarios and things like that we do have some challenge in scenarios things coming out for our pro users but the full tabletop experience where we keep up to date regularly quarterly monthly of all the recent threats that are out there and that updated that is for businesses only um, and that's a separate module that you have to purchase yeah. So tabletop exercises, typically you don't, you know, you don't grab a, a Coke or a code red Mountain Dew on a Saturday night and just run through a tabletop by yourself. Right. It, well, okay. Maybe Clint does, <laughs> but it is, it is very much a, uh, to benefit a business and to strengthen, uh, a cybersecurity program for an organization. So let's jump into IR tabletop. We're going to go ahead and pick pipeline. Uh, I'm choosing pipeline just because, um, I, it's a medium sized one, so I think it applies to the 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 you know the biggest user group um, since we're just generally picking. But obviously, if you're a smaller business, you may select smaller uh, map, or if you're a large business, you may select a larger business. Notice those experienced players that we've reordered them so the smallest is on the top. <laughs> yep. Now they're actually in size of uh, size. Uh, so jumping right in here, immediately you can see. Um, there are some custom scenarios, right? So if you want to you want to say like and this is pretty common too, right? So a dungeon master if you want to call me your tabletop facilitator, they would have to think through and then articulate this scenario. The threat gen platform already has all of these scenarios baked into it, which is part of the I guess the value add of using a platform like this. Um, it's, it's just because you don't have to think through it, right? So if you want to focus on email phishing, uh, which is a really common attack vector, as we know, um, classic cyber attack, um, going for P&L, right? So data exfil, all these things, uh, social engineering, you, you can read them yourself. But the idea here is that twofold. One, again, a real value of this platform is the ease of replayability. So you can start zeroing in on specific things uh, like ransomware or social engineering, right? And and have those crafted scenarios so you can work through what your processes are, your detection mechanisms, are staff made aware of it? And management is understanding because management really knows about ransomware because that's what they hear all the time. But they may not hear about, um, you know, targeting P&L and data exfil and kind of the slow drip on the business. And that one really would resonate with them. You could even uh, walk through a business email compromise type thing using the email phishing one. But today we're going to be looking at Black Matter. Black just Matter. Just real quick, just yes. interrupt real quick, just so yeah. So you can choose these individual and know what you're going to be facing, but you can also select random. And if you select random, then it could be any one of these so that you don't exactly know what the threat is, the threat actor. So um, that's kind of cool too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, guys, I think. This this may be the last time I say it, but again, like the replayability about it, to me, is a key differentiator because tabletop exercises they you usually have to get everybody the same day off, right? It's like it's like an offsite that it 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 bricks everybody's schedule for that whole day, and it's a big to do, and that's why it happens annually and stuff like this. You literally could make this a monthly activity, um, easily. You know what I mean? Or, or pull in different groups within the organization, like the finance department. Hey guys, let's let's work together. Or the you know the board comes in for a quarterly meeting, and you and you throw a quick uh, simulation together. Okay, so we're going to be doing black matter ransomware. Some of you may recall last Wednesday's stream. 
I played as Black Matter Ransomware Threat Actor Group, and we went and ransomware the crap out of an organization. Today, we will be defending from that. Black Matter Ransomware Threat Actors have attacked numerous U.S.-based organizations and have demanded ransom payments all the way up to over a million dollars. They've exfiltrated data for extortion, which is really their bag right now. And instead of um, encrypting backup systems also, which used to be like the de the, like the, the thing that th threat actors did in like 2020, um, now they just wipe the backup systems because it's faster, easier, and they still already have your data. So they're going to get paid. So Black Matter Ransomware is a tier one threat actor, and we're going to be going head to head against them today. Okay. I also want to let you all know that tabletop exercises are supposed to be a safe space. Like you don't, you don't, you don't say things like that's wrong or what a stupid idea it's like okay like let's talk through it let's no open... jerry that's wrong that's wrong. Just... let's have that open communication and one also important thing obviously you know when this is normally played as a game you want to win winning would be nice but it's not the main goal the main goal is to identify your processes get people used to the concepts of dealing with in this case a ransomware outbreak in your environment and, and having people think through and answer questions. It's not to win the game. Winning would be nice, but it's additional, okay? You've got a little bit of intel here on Black Matter, a little bit of an understanding. And then if you want to win the tabletop scenario, you can do it one of these ways. Let's go ahead and start the game. One interesting thing that you'll note when you start the game. So Jacob A asks, is this a player versus AI or computer? We are playing as the blue team. I am facilitating this tabletop exercise. The AI is playing against us and they are operating as black matter. They have been programmed to think, execute, and operate under the TTPs of black matter ransomware threat actor group. So that's, that's what's important to understand. Normally, a facilitator would have to think through all of these things and then start saying, okay, so an end user calls in and reports that their computer is kind of messed up. What do you do? Uh, well, we go down there and look at it. Okay, so you, you went down there and looked at it. You see that there's a ransom note from Black Matter. What do you do, right? Like you have to be both sides in a tabletop exercise. With this platform, the side of the threat actor is handled by AI and it's different. Uh, a little bit different each time around. Obviously, in this case, they're always going to be doing AI. I mean, uh, and, Black Matter. And just so you know, um, in in today's run through, we've made uh, these injects and and scenarios uh, a little more generic um, because we're I, we have such a broad user base here today and viewers uh, that might be playing along. But normally, the out of the box scenario descriptions and injects, the story is a little more specific and everything like that. So we made it more generic for that purpose today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just reminder, if you just joined us, I am running the think of me as the CISO and the facilitator, but a lot of the facilitation is being handled by the platform. And you and chat are going to be my analysts and we are working together through this tabletop scenario. I'm going to be trying to run this exactly how I would run a tabletop. It is live, so <laughs> things happen. But let's go ahead and look at the notifications. So we get a threat intel report. It indicates that new ransomware threat actors have been discovered and they seem to be targeting organizations like us. This is not uncommon. CISA, shields up. Hey, you know what? Um, we're seeing some activity of threat actor groups going after um, Pipe, what, what kind of organization are we now? Uh, pipeline? Pipeline. Yeah. So we are Colonial Pipeline. We've got notification of some uptick in activity, some chatter on the uh, on the, on the the classified threads. Be on the lookout. Okay. Uh-oh. So, you know, shields up. Suspicious activity reported. Oh, no. So several users have reported odd behavior on their workstation. Some files are corrupted. Some apps and services don't seem to be functioning correctly. That's not good. Okay. So we're going... To be mindful of that, we're going to have Help Desk walk through their procedures and do that. Now, you can see here really quick, just as a pause, if you're familiar with the game, it does have the turn. It has all the resources and stuff. Um, some controls are already implemented. So this is more consistent, right? We have network segmentation already. We have our firewalls. You can see we've got uh, some policies and procedures, gateway firewall. Our users have had awareness training and we have the ability to create backups. So, so this is our current start state. It looks like we have VPN too. So this is relatively consistent with 
an organization, but obviously a lot of room for improvement. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong in our environment. We did hear suspicious activity, so we're we're being a little bit mindful, but we're going to keep going. Now, just so you know, since we don't see anything wrong, exactly, Ben just said MFA. I agree 100%. So following best practices, in my opinion, um, since we're not dealing with an incident right now, I would definitely go 2FA. I think it's incredibly valuable. And I'm going to do asset inventory because these two are CIS control. Like, you know, this is CIS control one and 2FA is just what you have to do in 2022. Do we need to take backups? Jenny Housley asks about backups. Great question, Jenny. We do have the, the ability to take backups now. This is a fairly manual process, but while we're in here, it costs zero people because it's automated. And it takes one turn. So let's go ahead and take backups on all of the systems that we can. We do have automated backups and scheduled backups and, uh, uh, on the roadmap. So, okay. So I'm going to just, I'm, I'm go ahead and take in backups. You can see we've got our VPN up here. Restore points. Got those critical. And by the way, guys, it's like, it's Wednesday morning. We're just coming into work. It's not uncommon to get a threat intel report, okay? It's not uncommon. So, all right, we're on the lookout. We've got our regular backups going, no big deal. 2FA, uh, asset inventory, we're good to go. So we are just, you know, making our regular decisions, doing our thing. I'm going to go ahead and look one more time at what we have. You can see we have the opportunity to skill up our, our 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 staff a little bit, so this is good. Harden our IDP. Now, one thing that, that Jerry, one thing you're doing that that is important in tabletop exercises is, is that no matter what type of tabletop exercise platform you're using, especially one that's more automated like ThreatGen, and and you know there's there is other like even whether you're using PowerPoint slides or whatever, you don't want to look at what you can do for don't play the game don't look and see well okay what can we do specifically it's best to have dialogue discuss it amongst your team as you would naturally organically in an incident or 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 through the normal course of doing your your cybersecurity program and then make decisions whatever decisions you come up with use that then to put those decisions into the simulation let the simulation facilitate your decision making process and your dialogue Exactly. And I should have noted this before, we didn't do it. But even with this, before we even get into the map, before we even get into the tabletop exercise, Threat Intel report comes out, says that threat actors are targeting organizations like ours. Question, right? Let's just say, let's just say the CEO's there. Let's just say members of the board are there, right? Or the CIO. We'll pretend we're in an organization where I am the CISO. I report to the CIO who reports to the CIO. I, as the CISO, have got a threat intel report that organizations like ours are being targeted. Question, management, is this something that you would want to know about? You know, I could tell the CIO in a weekly roll-up if it's, if it's increased activity. You know, is this something that you'd want to know about, right? I mean, that's a fair question, and it's challenging what the current status quo is for your environment. Because normally, I would just brief you at our weekly meeting. Hey, there's an uptick in activity. I'm not saying the sky's falling, but I am saying that there's an activity. And, and maybe they say yes, maybe they say no. That's organization specific, specific. Now, here's another thing. Suspicious activity reported, odd behavior. How do we know about this? Are the calls coming into help desk? Help desk, you know, hopefully help desk person's there. If people were reporting that files are corrupted all over the place and apps and services don't seem to be working, would you tell the InfoSec team, this isn't necessarily guaranteed. It is totally reasonable for IT help desk to just reboot the device, maybe send some people down, no big deal. So that becomes another discussion point. Do you see how these things can take four to six hours? Because before I even get into it, we're talking about process. And again, you know, and we're down about two minutes here. And the reason you have a timer here is so that you do have a sense of urgency. So do you have some pressure on you? But mm -hmm. and again, you know, in in a in a standard where we're not trying to do this live streaming, the dialogues would be more specific like that. They would actually say this call came from help doc, uh, help desk. These are the specific 
um, workstations that are affected, etc. Okay, so we're gonna end the turn because you know we're we're just maintaining, right? So Jenny Housley. Now, guys, another thing Jenny mentioned backups. We took backups, right? So we took our backups. These are all backed up now, but it's important to note two things. One, this um, historian. The backup I just took is from October 5th, 2022. So if it's October 30th, 2022, and I restore from a backup, we've just lost 25 days worth of data. Is that okay? You tell me. I don't think so. So are we supposed to take up backups every day? Here, I'll take another backup because we're supposed to do backups daily on this thing. This is an important asset. Okay. If, I, if it's compromised and I back it up, when I'm restoring, I'm restoring from a compromised system. You, you feel me? So we've got to be mindful of that. And that's just another discussion point. Okay. All of our assets are currently occupied right now. So we're just going to pass the turn. Exactly. Alex Goodwin. How many of those backups are clean? Exactly. So you've got to, that's another kind of risk decision you have to make and worth talking about. It's worth talking about, again, this is a live stream, so it's a little different, but you may at this point talk about what is our backup strategy? How often are we backing up? Do we have multiple instances of backups, right? So you could roll back to a non-infected version, right? Cold backup, that's right. So I'm going to pass the turn, hopefully get our um, asset inventory completed here. Let's continue the turn. Everything still looks good, looks quiet. Again, we're, we're just backing up this one every day. Ma ma uh, maintenance. <laughs> Management's pretty happy. Everything's good. And you know, we are dealing this the, the thing about this, this isn't this isn't scripted. This isn't one of those things to where everything's gonna happen exactly like the same time. That's one of the kind of the, we have an active adaptive adversary. So you mm -hmm. can play the same scenario over and over again, and things will happen differently, slightly different depending on the actions and things you take. So it's kind of like, okay, you got some suspicious user reports, you know, have all, now you're kind of maintaining, you're looking for it, you know, we're not really looking for anything yet, but, but you never know like if and when it's going to strike and where. Exactly. Exactly. And you could begin to, um, you know, er everything's quiet, eerily quiet. So do we have do we have the ability to detect these things? You know, are staff aware? You could ask, you know, like just as an example. Okay, so things are kind of quiet. Users are calling in to report problems. Could be related to a phishing organization. What is the process and does everybody know it around reporting phishing emails? Do you have a process? What is the process? Does everybody know the process? It's just another good opportunity to be asking questions and working through it again. The tabletop exercise, the entire you know, function of it is to identify gaps in your program procedurally and knowledge base. I'm going to pass the turn here. Yeah, and another thing that's really important to remember uh, is b b b before you pass your turn is that that <clears throat> the simulation here, all the things that Jerry is discussing, discussing, this simulation is not going to handle all of those details and answer all those questions for you this is a framework that's going to facilitate the environment and the storyline and enough of the details to where you have to fill in those gaps yourself because if it gave you all of the answers then you can't tailor it to your organization and discuss it according to your organization yeah exactly and and to, to clint's point when we said at the beginning of the show the way tabletops are normally done, you need a senior practitioner who creates the whole thing and then facilitates the whole thing because they have the background and experience to be able to make it interesting and pivot pivot around. The, the tabletop thing does that, but it doesn't mean that you you wouldn't give an executive this and say, here's a tabletop exercise, go with it. It just allows people who are, you know, one or two years in the field or, you know, or, you know, don't have as much experience as a 25 year veteran to be able to facilitate and run tabletops and run them repeat it like like regularly right you could do it monthly which is really unheard of all right so i'm going to go ahead and pass the turn doing our backups on the pcs historian okay so now we looks like we have an issue our remote so we implemented two-factor auth which is great we have remote access defense so our we've hardened our rdp i guess 
And now we have a ransomware. So a user has reported that many of their files are locked and a strange message has popped up demanding ransom. The malware continues to spread across your different segments until you can contain the spread, mitigate, remediate the threat. So let's look at this. All right. So it's an end user. Okay. So it's Glenn. Glenn. All right. It's probably sales, probably whatever. Now, here is a real opportunity. You pause it and say, hey, listen, we have an end user who has ransomware on their box. Their machine doesn't work anymore, but it's just one end user. This is a real question. Do you want, like CIO, do you want to know about this? Or the executives, do you want to know about this? Right? At this point, do you want to know about it? Secondly, it is just an end user. So chat, do we want to pay the ransom? Real question. Who wants to pay the ransom? Show of hands. Real question. Oh, and we could say, maybe it depends on what the ransom is. So interesting. Okay. So now we need to know how much the ransom is. Let's say the ransom is $40,000. Yeah. And this. that's not a detail that we put in the game here yet. Um, but I, you know, I think that it would be something interesting to do would be to when that ransom pops up and says, this is the ransom amount, but we haven't done that here. Exactly. But, but it's a decision point and you understand how, again, the, the game is a framework to facilitate conversations and not allow the participants to focus on how things are done here instead of how to execute a, a, a tabletop discussion, right? Or, you know, like the scenario piece of it. So Glenn's machine. All right. So it looks like most people aren't going to pay the ransom. Adreville Ruiz asks a wonderful question. What's on Glenn's machine? Right? Is Glenn a CEO? Is Glenn got the, is he the secret sauce engineer who's got, all, you know, the Twitter source code? Good question. Frank Cumberland, never pay. Okay. So these these are the conversations that you want to have and work through and discuss. You know, you might find two executives who have wildly different opinions. Somebody also mentioned restoring Glenn from uh, the last backup. But because Glenn is a remote user, was Glenn involved? Was Glenn's machine connected when we did the backups? It's quite possible we don't have backups for Glenn. So what we're going to do is we have to decide whether or not to activate IR. We do have a ransomware incident. We, we are going to activate IR, okay? We got to deal with this thing. But just so you know, um, because activating IR takes one turn, we are going to continue to... We have enough resources to activate IR and continue to uh, uh, accomplish our mission. So because Glenn is a heightened risk, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do um, I'm going to install a sim, which takes one turn, so it'll resolve, right? I'm going to install a sim because we're obviously we're obviously having issues in our environment, so we need to see what's up, right? Oh, Frank Cumberland's been around the block once or twice. Everything of value should be on a network storage and Glenn just gets re-imaged and back to work. <laughs> yes. So uh, I'm going to install the SIM. Okay. Uh, we can't really do anything that takes more than one turn because we want to um, get, we want to get Glenn's machine squared away. We can implement strong Wi-Fi. Okay. Let's implement strong Wi-Fi. Again, this is just to do something while we're waiting. And let's deploy USB security on Glenn. Now, remember, we're fighting Black Matter ransomware group, right? We can pull the TTPs. Black Matter doesn't come on site. They execute remotely. They get access inside your environment, move laterally, and ransomware all the things and do data exfil. That is what we're defending against, okay? So we're not really worried about cameras and all that other stuff. Yeah, and it's important to note that's the, a big difference between playing red versus blue in its normal mode and tabletop mode, and that in normal mode, um, the adversary, the red team AI, will use whatever tactics it has available to the entire arsenal, whereas 
in tabletop mode, it uses specific TTPs. And that's important when running tabletop exercises so that you can learn how to protect and defend against very specific threats. Yes, exactly. Especially if you get that threat intel report that says there's an uptick in activity in your industry. Casual Joseph asks if there is opportunity in the future or on the roadmap, Clint, to make more customized environments so it simulates your organization's environment. Yeah, so I'll answer that in two quick ways. Number one, um, before that happens, we are in the process of creating a much more diverse set of network maps so that you can choose one that more accurately represents what you have. And then the answer to your second question is yes, we're absolutely creating the ability to where you can customize it um, so that you can have something more specific to your organization. But I will caution you, the reason why we keep it at a certain level of generic network maps, and we want to be similar to your network map, but not provide so much specificity in the details is because one thing that we found with tabletop exercises, no matter what you're using to do it with, is that the more specificity, the more fidelity that you include in your tabletop exercises, the more room you open up for argument. If you try to get too specific, then you always have the individuals that are going to say, well, you're that specific here, but you're not here. So you're not comparing apples to oranges. That wouldn't happen in our, in our environment. It, in order to, to practice and test the efficacy of a procedural program, like, like an incident response program, incident response plans, you have to focus at a higher level. You have to stay strategic and you have to focus on those level of things. If you start focusing and diving too, too much down into, into the details, then you're going to, you're going to get way down the point of a tabletop exercise. Details is for a more functional exercise where you're actually throwing out, uh, you know, real inject, real packets when you're getting your real technical team involved. That's not the purpose of a tabletop exercise. We got uh, we got our actions here. Another great point uh, worth discussing is um, if if we're going to activate IR and go about it, um, you know, in the game, we're going to do what we're going to do. But you may ask the question, you know, hey, IT help desk or hi, InfoSec uh, SecOps team. If a end user's machine was ransomware, what would be the process? What would be the SOP if we're if we're going to decide, okay, uh, it's not a big deal. We don't need to pay the ransom. We don't need to notify management. We're just going to take care of it. What is taking care of it look like? Um, Frank says, re-image the machine, get Glenn back out in the field. I agree 100%. But do you have the ability to reimage Glenn's machine? Where's Glenn's machine? Does Glenn have to mail it somewhere? Where does he mail it? How long do we mail a replacement machine to Glenn? Right? These procedural things, these details is the point. It's simple to say reimage and send it. It's hard to do reimage and send him on his way if Glenn is in Indonesia or Glenn had, you know, whatever, some special application on it. So you can't just reimage it. Um, with or or send them to Best Buy and pick up a new machine. Okay, so these are the questions you have to ask. Let's, let's go ahead. We we're <clears throat> excuse me. We're activating IR. All right, blue team, it's our turn. We got threat monitoring enabled, so we have a sim now, which is great. We implemented our Wi-Fi, which we just did as a throwaway, uh, and we got baseline security. Again, we're not expecting Black Matter to um, to, to to show up and jump on the wireless, but yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I like resource. Holy crap. So we are in IR and we have another end user who's reporting ransomware. You can see right here, this machine is also compromised. So we've got a problem now. Like now the question, do we tell management now? We have multiple end users, one on-prem corporate, one in the field, both with ransomware. We don't know. Do we know? If it's the same ransomware, how are we communicating? Our PL is going down. This is fine, right? <laughs> this is the dog on fire. This is fine, guys. We have major problems. And this is where it's the energy, the emotion starts picking up. Okay. Now, the question for management do we pay the ransom? The threat actor is saying that they will give us keys to all of the encrypted systems for $100,000. Do we pay the ransom management? Do we call 
do we call it the insur insurance company? I, you tell me. Like, what? And if they say no, or if they say yes, or there's some discussion and argument, you know, or, or, or disagreement, then the question becomes, well, what is the threshold? What are we talking about here? Is it number of systems? Is it critical systems? What? Which ones are the critical ones? To tell me that. Is it a certain dollar amount we call the insurance company? These nooks and crannies is is literally what you're trying to pry out and again the system facilitates this discussion so you can really focus on that so so rpo rto evaluation again uh the acronym return point objective return time objective how far back can you do you need to go uh before it's a problem right if you if you have to bring data back uh if you lose seven days of data is that okay Meaning when you restore it, like the last seven days of transactions are gone. Financial services, you bet that's not acceptable at all. Every trans, every ATM transaction in the last seven days wiped out. This isn't Mr. Robot, okay? Aaron Shabib, if considering the option to pay the ransom, you probably need to think about the value of the work that will be lost if you replace. Yeah. So that's part of the whole discussion too. And that would definitely come out when you say, do we pay the ransom or not? What What's the business impact? Are we down? Is Patel the guy who's like creating widgets? I don't know. In the game here, in the simulation, how down you are and how much production you're losing is indicated by your profit and loss meter up there above. And you can see that that the the blue indicators are starting to move down that meter. Yes. Now Alana says right here in chat, she'd call legal and review our policies. Uh, I would agree. And again. Is it documented? What are the thresholds? What are the standards for when legal gets involved? When, dude, the insurance company wants to get called ASAP because they want to deploy an IR firm on it now, right? But you also don't want to be chicken little and have some random laptop user uh, getting the call or, or for the call. Okay, so guys, what do you want to do? We can clean the asset, which takes two turns, basically uh, uh, removing the threat actor from the environment. Uh, I don't think... It fixes ransomware though. Cleaning the asset just removes the threat actor, not yeah, it doesn't unencrypt your files, you know. Yeah, it does it? not unencrypt your files. Um, so we can clean the asset, which isn't gonna help us too much. We can replace the asset. So we don't have the ability to re-image Frank. That capability isn't in our company right now. But we could replace so it, but it's five thousand dollars. So it's a little expensive. Or we could restore from our backups, which is free and only takes one turn. Keep the ideas coming, by the way. I'm seeing all these great ideas in chat. Some people are making suggestions. Uh, so, so I can't talk this morning. Some people are making suggestions that the current mechanics of the game do not support. However, that's great because if you see something that should be done in real life and it's not supported in the mechanics of the game, let us know. And we'll put it on a roadmap to improve the fidelity and the value that these tabletop simulations uh will provide yep please please do that uh, i'm just putting a little thing up on the screen really quickly here staying with me see how this looks really quick just so people jumping in can understand what we're doing i see some new people joining us um okay guys so i think to me it makes the most sense these are end users um you know, it, it's, it sucks, but we do have backups, which, you know, the reason we have backups is to do that. I mean, this is effectively as close as we can get to re-imaging these machines. I think we should we, uh, re restore from backup and just move about the day. Alex Goodwin says, looking at Black Matters MO, their TTP, should we be worried about different network segments getting ransom? Absolutely. Absolutely. Law enforcement. Age Tendril is talking about when do we call law enforcement? Great question. I think maybe um, the insurance company might be involved with that, but guys, it's a great question. It's a very good question. Who who gets to decide whether or not we call law enforcement? If you're a publicly traded company, you bet that's a big decision that's outside my pay grade. Yeah, and that's something that should be done. And that's something that 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 uh, we literally just put on a roadmap is the option to when do you engage law enforcement, FBI, and how does that affect things here? So that's one thing that that is coming eventually <laughs> all right so i'm gonna restore from backup uh on these two assets uh good thing we uh 
we still have a resource available. We can't really do anything valuable other than that. So we're going to have to pass the turn. Now, restoring from backups only takes one turn. So I'm going to go ahead. The idea here is that we'll be, rest we'll be restoring from backups, which takes one turn, and then deactivating IR. Because, guys, you know, incident response is completed. Now, it is important to note, you'd have to play through this a few times, but like, we do not have the ability currently to collect forensics. That is a skill that we don't have yet, right? So, guys, I don't know if you know this, but digital forensics is not like a package you buy and you just like do it. Like, it's a skill. And a lot of businesses, and I can speak from my own experience, a lot of businesses just want to get the machine back online and off and running. Like, you're not really doing forensics because I don't care if it's black matter or if it's Revil or if it's whatever. I just need the machine back online and let's go, right? So we don't have that skill at our organization, but we may want it, right? Or, you know, law enforcement gets brought in and they're bringing that. Okay, so we're going to restore from that, deactivate IR, and move on to the next turn. Hopefully this is the end of our problem. Okay. Look at that. We're clean. Everything's good. Everything's good. Now, here's another question just as an injection because we're playing along as if this is a table. I mean, this is a tabletop live, but we're doing it. So you might say, okay, we just dealt with a ransomware incident. What kind of post-incident thing should we be doing, right? Should we send out an email to management saying, hey, there was an incident and you know it's all cleared up now? Should we do nothing? Should we... Um, like increase our, our uh, activity around monitoring. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like should this cause anything or is it just back to work, get back to work, do what you normally do, right? And it's a real question because it does take uh, time and energy and effort to do anything else. But since we're back to normal, it didn't seem like a big deal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I want to do vulnerability mapping and in order to do that, I have to do some safe testing methods. We're going to do that. Uh, and chat, anybody, we're just kind of operating. I am open to feedback. Uh, does anybody have any thoughts on what we may want to do? I could do the security skills training, which will take me all three resources, three <clears throat> turns. But I so, will be able to get in threat hunting, which allows me to look on devices for infection. Go ahead. So real quick, somebody just mentioned, you know, definitely find out how they got in and then inform end users. So... Um, in the simulation here, in these tabletops, the way that you analyze, uh, you know, in initial attack vector and in these, uh, these sort of things is at the end of the tabletop. You could look through the red team's logs and you can, you can, you can see how they got in and see how they did everything. However, the scenario here hasn't ended. Why hasn't it ended? Well, if you would have completely, there's a hint for you here in that. If you would have completely cleaned everything off as part of the win conditions here and winning this scenario is that you have to completely not only find the threat and you have to completely eradicate the threat. So the fact that the scenario isn't one here means that there's still something wrong. Yeah. And you got to remember, y'all, we don't have EDR uh, endpoint detection and response on our endpoints. We don't have log collection and analysis. I actually may uh, back up <laughs> my safe testing methods. Actually, no, because I, I definitely want to get in there uh, and do a vulnerability assessment. But we need to we need to start dropping EDR now. I'll just tell you this: as the CISO, I want to put EDR on Glenn's machine, and Patel's machine. Right, those two machines were compromised. They have a higher likelihood of of issue. Right, so let's get some visibility onto those boxes and see what's happening. Go ahead and pass the turn. Hopefully, at this point, you've already had like numerous good conversations with the the stakeholders at the meeting. We got our endpoint detection installed, but it looks like we have another compromised asset detected in our environment. It's Glenn and Patel again. So you could see, okay, like we are beginning to focus our effort on those two end users. Now, we restored from backups, guys, and these two end users are there. 
What does that tell us about these two systems? That would be a question as the CISO I would ask. And I would also say, um, Clint, you have 25 years of experience. You're not allowed to speak. You know, casually Joseph, you know, and I'm just making this up casually Joseph, so it may not be uh, true, but like casually Joseph, you have two years of professional experience. So you have less experience than Clint. I want to hear what you think this means. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's all about developing both your team and defining processes and getting um, assumptions remediated on standards and, and dispositions and when to make decisions and who makes the decisions. That's what's going on. Okay. Adam leaves talking about infected backups. Bad actors know their public IP and will return to try again. That's right. Could be weak passwords. These are all good conversations. Another thing, I'm going to change the camera angle really quick, Clint. Another thing that is worth noting here is that I have run tabletop exercises in two different formats. One, I've done the all hands management, insurance company, legal, uh, you know, internal and external legal, CISO. I've run those. And that this platform and the way we're doing it today is perfect for those. But I've also run tabletops internal to the information security office where the CISO leads it and can ask those really detailed questions about knowledge gaps and specifics and also mentor the staff on, on, on understanding what this looks like. Because guys, another value of a tabletop exercise is being able to experience a bad situation without any of the real life impact of that bad situation from happening. All right, so we're talking about all these different great ideas. I see uh, Richa and Carrie and Nero. I see you guys in here, very good. So let's let's figure out what we're doing here. We haven't taken any action. We see these two guys straight, um, not looking good. So do we activate IR and clean them up again? The backups are clearly a problem. Backups are a problem, guys. Do we do we restore from backup? Do we take new backups? Do we buy new systems? We have to give one more turn or else we're going to lose our safe testing method. That's another discussion point right there, Clint. If we activate IR, all the work we've done on safe testing goes away. Are we willing to lose that <clears throat> that project, you know? Well, and what it assumes here, creating ICS safe testing method, method, uh, methods is not a technical or mechanical process. Um, it's literally creating procedures and policies. But what you've done is you're stopping the work that you're doing, creating that, and you're redirecting your staff, your security staff into going in and it's a response. So that work um, gets paused. Now, right now, there's no solution to save that work and come back to it. It's just lost if you abandon it. Um, we're working on a solution to where it's at least saved. Yeah. So since I have two resources, I can do things that take one turn each. I'm going to go ahead and put log collection analysis on the PCS firewall, since these are my high value targets. Um, and on my um, gateway firewall, my main firewall. Remember, Black Matter works remotely. I know they've got these two guys, but you know we don't want them walking through the front door. So we want some visibility on that. And then we're going to activate IR because this is going to resolve. So this is our queue. Okay, guys? Hopefully everybody's good with this. DMZ firewall over the PCS firewall. Yeah, you know what? I can get on board with that. See, this is a great conversation. Casually Joseph just brought it up. Why did I make the decision to do the PCS firewall? Well, it's because it's protecting the sen most sensitive stuff. But his point is, if they're coming remotely, how about the DMZ firewall first? I like that. I'm going to do that. See, we're making, we're making, uh, and you're leaving the firewalls that can be attacked from a pivot without log collection. Uh, well, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. Let me, uh, that's a good point. God, it's it's nauseating, but it's a it's a good conversation. I'm gonna go ahead with this. Alex Goodwin's question is why not put log collection analysis on the server firewall since Patel can get to that into the DMZ firewall? Um, you know what? What do you think, Clint? <clears throat> Gateway firewall versus the server firewall. Front door versus you know a compromised internal asset going through an internal firewall. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> when you get down to it, you know you have a remote user. 
uh, which is coming in through a DMZ who is compromised and you have a, a, an end user compromise and what connects both of those is the server firewall there. So go cyber firewall, the server, the server. Yeah. The server firewall, you definitely want to get log collection on the, the server firewall would be most logical. All right. Well, I'm going to do the server firewall then. Good question, Alex. And the DMZ firewall, since uh, people coming in from the DMZ uh, are infected. So essentially, uh, these two firewalls are the only barrier uh, with, you know, bad on one side and then activate IR. Does this matter what order it's in here? I'm going to just do it this way. Okay, let's end the turn. Great discussion, by the way, guys. We are doing... Great tabletop exercises here. I love it. Oh, Jesus. We got a ransomware infection. Users reporting an infection. We've, we're in IR, which is good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Our file server is infected. Our PNL is going down. <laughs> I'm just going to go throw up in a, in a <laughs> trash can. Um, okay. It looks like because we put log analytics here, good call, Alex Goodwin. Good call, Clint. Um, we can detect malware here. Guys, real quick, just as a meta topic really quickly, I hope you notice that what I told this at the beginning, one of the things I have seen from those all hands tabletop exercises that totally sucks is that management disengages and starts screwing around on their phone instead of paying attention to what's going on. I hope you can feel that because the game changes every turn and there's things going on, that it's not just me saying, oh, the file server's ransomware. Now what do you do? You see it. You feel it. There's a sense of anxiety, energy. This is going to engage management and leadership and be make them present. I can't tell you how valuable that is, having them be present. Okay, so now I'm wiping the vomit off of my face because this is really worst case scenario for me, okay? We've got a ransomware incident. The ransomware note says your file server is encrypted and your uh, it's, we're black matter, so feel that. Uh, here's a Telegram post. We're going to be doing whatever. Um, like we don't have a, a, a ransomware letter, but you can easily Google one from black matter and have it right there. Uh, so now we have to have the real dis discussion again. Now do we call law enforcement, insurance? Maybe we already did. What, what, what's the number here? What's our number where we will pay this ransom without thinking twice? And what's the number where we absolutely won't pay? And if we're going to pay, let's just say that management's like any price is the right price. $100,000, $1 million. We don't care. We're going to pay it. The next question you're going to say is, how do you pay it? They want Bitcoin. Do we have Bitcoin? Do we have a hardware wallet? Do, I can go get us a wallet, but you, how are you going to give me money? Like I work in, as the CISO, CFO, how are you going to give me money that I can convert to Bitcoin to pay this ransom? And who is negotiate, like who's having the conversation with the threat actor on how to get them the money? That's a real discussion, guys. You can't just put the ransomware threat actor as a vendor in your ERP system and issue them a payment. It doesn't work that way. It takes time. Also, at this point, you might say, how long can we go down with the file server not up? Okay? So we are in IR right now. Our, our, our file server is hosed. So this is definitely, in my opinion, we have a ransomware file server our server firewall is compromised. We have an end user on our infrastructure compromised, and we have a remote user compromised. To me, the priority is the file server because it's it's ransomware and it has all the network shares. Business is impacted, right? We could restore from a backup. We did have backups, guys. I feel like restoring from backups is a good idea since we had a backup. I want to point out that we took a backup on turn one. It's turn eight, seven days later. So any file updates and stuff that have been made are gone. <laughs> so feel that. <sighs> Next, can we do uh, forensics? Nope. Patel, we can gather forensics on this one. So let's gather forensics. Right? Gather forensics. And this would be a question. Are we going to gather forensics? Are we going to replace the asset? Here. 
I feel like our firewall needs to be um, replaced, right? Do we all agree that the... Yeah, no IR procedures yet. Exactly. Jenny Housley brings up a great point. We don't have IR procedures, but this is a conversation. Like, let's just say that we come to this decision. It takes us 20 minutes. Oh, by the way, if you're doing tabletop exercises, the cool thing is the game actually has a timer that counts down. But if you're doing it without a timer or if you're like pausing it so you can have conversations, I strongly encourage you time box it. People will just blah, 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 blah. Everybody wants their opinion to be heard. You have to put a time box on and say, listen, we'll discuss this for 10 minutes and that's it, right? And so get your best point out first. Also, when you come up with these actions, replace the asset, like you could talk through, do we have a process? Who's replacing the server firewall? Who, who is doing that? Is Chris the guy who's in charge of firewalls? Chris, if I told you today, if I called you right now, Chris, and said, change, replace the firewall, could you do that right now? Jenny Housley, you're the network engineer. Can we replace the firewall right now? No, we'd have to order a new one. Do, okay, do we know how to order a new one? No. Okay, well, we can't go to Comp T or, 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 or Best Buy and get one, can we? No, we'd have to go through CDW. Okay. How long does it take to get a firewall from CDW? Three days. Okay. So do we run this firewall knowing it's compromised for three days? Or do we take it down and disconnect it from the network and have even more severely impacted business? That's a real question for management and a risk tolerance thing. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm not deactivating IR because we are, we are a hot mess on fire, y'all. We can dis disconnect the machines from the network. We can. Our PL has dropped to 75%. Our production has dropped to 75% or below. So if we're making $200 million a year, we're only making $150 million a year right now, people, which still sounds like a ton of money. But if you go tell, <laughs> if you just go, if you go tell the, uh, whoever owns the company that they're losing $50 million, um, they're not going to like that. Okay. This is an indicator of compromise. By the oh god, Glenn got ransomware. You could see our fire ser file server is back up, so that's pretty good. <clears throat> All right, you can also at this point introduce injects. Like, uh, here's a good one. That's a pretty common one. Um, people at work have been talking on social media about the file server being encrypted and how business how they went home for the day because there was no work. A reporter has called you. You, CISO, a reporter has called you or has called Jenny Housley. Who can you talk to the reporter? I don't know. Can you? And if, if you can't, who are you supposed to tell the reporter to call? Are and we? By, yeah, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So go ahead. I mean, are we no comment until further notice? Is there a PR person? If there is a PR person, do they know what to say? Have they been looped in at this point? This is another conversation that needs to happen. And by the way, this is why you want to do multiple tabletops and why using this platform is awesome because you can do multiple tabletops quickly because you're going to have a lot of conversations, a lot of lessons learned in those first couple um, tabletop scenarios. Go ahead, Clint. I was going to say something different, but now I have another comment. Uh, and I actually forgot what I was going to say before. I think you covered it. But uh, long story short. Um, uh, we got, hold on. Uh, mods on the Simply Cyber oh, channel. If you oh. have mods in there, can you please kick that user? Uh, go on, Clint. Oh, wow. That's, uh, ignore that. Uh, yeah. so the, the inject that you just talked about, um, in a normal tabletop, uh, not doing it live streaming, we suppressed a lot of the injects here, uh, for time purposes, but normally in a tabletop exercise that a customer would be doing or you or for your organization will be doing, you have a lot of these injects that pop up that tell that story that like you just did, Jerry. Uh, we just suppressed a lot of those for mm -hmm. time purposes um, here for the live stream. Yeah. Uh, the injects, keep, keep, keep you, talking because yeah. I'm, I'm booting that bot right sure. now. Yeah, you, you get a lot of those injects um, that will pop up for there. Some of them are random. To make you think and some of them are circumstantial that they'll pop up there'll be notifications and it is to encourage that dialogue and to get you thinking about these situations some of them will be due to a condition 
that can be corrected. And some of them are just almost rhetorical just to get you thinking. Absolutely. All right. That bot's been booted, ban hammered and reported to YouTube. All right. So <clears throat> our action queue has no actions right now. We're still in IR y'all. And we have replaced the firewall. So high five to us. We're feeling good about that. We're still collecting forensics on Patel. That'll resolve next turn. Glenn's machine is now hosed. Um, <clears throat> we can. Somebody so, suggested fire Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Glenn's out of here. Let's go ahead and replace Glenn's computer. Um, it's not a great option, but I feel like by replacing Glenn's computer, even though it's five grand, this is the second time he's had an incident with ransomware. Obviously, um, I, I got it. I took care of it. Um, Glenn, Glenn needs a new computer. Basically, the backups were compromised. His machine is compromised. Glenn is really a hot mess on fire. So we're going to replace his. I could clean the asset, but that's not going to get rid of the ransomware. I could gather forensics to help figure out a little bit more uh, of what's going on. But because this Patel thing is going to resolve next turn, um, I want to... Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, that's going to resolve next turn, but that's not going to clean the issue up. So I'm actually... I'm going to do gather forensics. I'm sorry. And we'll, uh, we'll clean... Well, we won't clean anything. We can't replace the asset because that'll, that'll resolve before... Here, maybe we can restore from backup since it'll just resolve one turn and be able to um, give Glenn a, a good working system for a minute, even though we know it's compromised. All right, so Glenn's machine's fixed, but we have, it's sus. Oh my God, so Patel's machine is compromised, so we couldn't get forensics on it. It like literally encrypted our tools that we were using to collect information on it. We're in IR. That's a new TTP. Don't really give anybody ideas. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace the asset. Um, it's the only thing we can do right now. Obviously, gathering forensics failed. Um, and we're also gonna replace Glenn's machine. Oh, we can't because it's not actually compromised. Interesting. Um, by the way, guys, I'm gonna ask for budget. I feel like this is another point right here. Okay, so I'm gonna request budget, but this is an awesome opportunity to have the conversation with management right there, talking about budget, guys. We have X amount of dollars. And you have to, as a CISO, you should definitely do your work before you go to the, uh, before you do this conversation. But you could say, hey, you know, my budget's $250,000. It's a portion of the CIO's budget. I don't even get my own uh, line item on the budget, which is okay. Uh, I've invested it this way, this way, and this way. But if we had an incident like this, I actually might need an extra twenty five thousand dollars to to bring in, uh, you know, a barricade cyber for r ransomware uh, incident response or to replace Glenn's machine. Like, yeah, we have life cycle replacement, but I wasn't expecting to. Glenn's got a brand new computer. I wasn't expecting to pay five grand for Glenn's computer. Is there any money socked away in a in a rainy day jar? to handle stuff like this, yes or no? Because if the answer is no, I as the CISO want to know that because then my decision on whether to replace Glenn's machine or not, it, it changes. Uh -huh, uh huh. you didn't say the magic word. Uh -huh. Uh, -huh. uh huh. you didn't say the magic word. Okay, so we're gonna request budget. I think we've made a compelling case to management and we're gonna replace his box, okay? We're also gonna, we're going to deactivate IR, but we have suspicion that Glenn's machine's hosed anyways. Um, so let's deactivate IR. I'm surprised they didn't get Samuel in that movie. Uh-uh-uh, you didn't say the word word. I wanted Samuel Jackson to go, say uh-uh one more time. Anyway. <laughs> so we replaced our asset. Our P&L uh, is, is, you know, screwed. Our, our action log looks like Crap. that's fine. No problem. So, guys, at this point... <laughs> We've, we've cleaned up the environment, but we are well aware that we are under attack. So what we want to do is continue to get uh, visibility. Um, like to me, I would, no, 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 no. I want to do log analytics on critical assets, the firewalls. Oh, I keep doing the wrong one, excuse me. All right, so our firewalls are done. Patel is clearly a hot mess on fire. 
So maybe we just we just replaced his machine. So let's create a restore point in case he gets popped again. And let's go ahead and end the turn. Just food for thought for everybody. This might be another opportunity to, to talk about if you were doing more of an internal feed uh, or InfoSec team tabletop. Hey guys, like what kind of threat intel do we have? Like we're clearly getting hit by somebody how, how are we getting intel? Are we part of an ISAC? Um, do you guys, like, you know, casually, Joseph, how, how are you getting informed? Like, you, you seem to think that, you know, before this was Black Matter's ransomware note, that there was a Black Matter uh, uptick in activity. Like, you know, like, that's another good way. Like, it's kind of tangential to the whole thing, but it's another opportunity. So we've got ransomware again in our environment. It's the mail server again. God dang. Um. <laughs> Crap. Okay, so we're going to put EDR on this machine. Which, by the way, there's different kinds of ransomware. I don't know Black Matter specifically. But a lot of ransomware just encrypts the data. Like, your operating system continues to run because they want you to be able to boot up the computer and see the um, the, the, the warning mess, uh, the ransom note, right? So it's not unrealistic to be able to install an, an application or an agent on the machine. So we're going to go ahead... And install EDR on this. We're going to activate IR. Um, after I use up my one more resource, let's do. Uh, oops, let's do EDR. By the way, we still haven't had a chance to like <laughs> look for misconfigurations and stuff. They're on the file server. The domain controller is clearly very important. So let's put EDR on that and activate IR. Right. Good work, everybody. By the way, yeah. I just have to mention this. Mm -hmm. um, one of my, uh, so Aaron, my lead developer and uh, business partner said in the background, uh, he complimented us. He said, this is a good stream. If he didn't write the game, he'd make this stream makes him want to buy the game. So good job, Jerry. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I just love the opportunity to be able to showcase that this platform is more than just an esports platform. It's more than just testing frameworks and it's way more than just playing a game, but it can do all of those things. This is just another powerful function of this platform. Glenn, and, and, I agree. Glenn does need to be fired. Yeah, Glenn's wicked fired. Where's the fire option? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we okay, we did not replace the asset, right? We just did a backup knowing that we, it was going to have to be replaced. So we've actually budgeted for that. Um, Hopefully I, oh, my budget request failed. Oh. So this could Maybe, be, you know, that could be, and I'm not saying this is in the game. I, I think we have a condition for this in here. I don't know. I don't know if it's on the roadmap or we implemented it, but a lot of times when your PL starts getting low, your management doesn't have the budget to give you sometimes unless you get critically low. Yeah. Your production is compromised. <laughs> so I restored the file server from backups, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So it's ransomware again, which means our backups are trash. So let's replace the asset. Guys, this is like, this is brutal. Like, I feel like I'm trying to stand up and I'm just like getting my like leg sweeped over and over again. Sweep the leg. Yeah, seriously, Johnny. <laughs> Put him in a body bag, Johnny. Do you have a problem with that, Mr. Lawrence? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that, Mr. Black Matter? Yeah, okay. Dude. Put him in a body bag. Yeah. So uh, we can't do anything else. I guess we're going to replace both assets and then we'll deactivate IR afterwards. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that resolves our issues. Oh, my gosh. Red Got team it. control removed. So what does that mean? That means that we replace the firewall. We replace Glenn's machine. Right? So just let me just let me just explain one thing. Uh, normally, in order to get the scenario win, that PNL meter would also have to be in the green. So you have to remove the threat, resume operations, and be in the green. We remove that for time constraints here on this stream. Just letting you know. Okay, very good. Now, now, guys, the power of the platform isn't done yet, right? So we all celebrate and feel good um, that we won. And it basically RT control removed. This means that we successfully rooted out the
the Black Matter Threat Actor. Our environment is clean. It's because we replaced assets, Glenn's machine, the file server machine, Patel's machine. We ultimately tried to recover from backups. Our backups were tainted and we ended up having to replace those assets. That was $15,000 worth of activity to replace those assets, but it ultimately got Black Matter out. We would have had numerous conversations with our management at this point and with our staff at this point throughout the tabletop exercise, okay? We won, but that's not the point. The point is really to, yeah, we're gonna look at that in a second. Um, the point is really to have these discussions, okay? Now, let's take a look. The Another really powerful thing is that you wouldn't just say, hey, good work, everybody, high fives, let's get beers. You'd actually say, okay, what did we do today that actually worked or we think we could do better, okay? Retrospective. Now let's look at the red team. Because of the because it's turn based, right? We can literally go back and say, okay, how did the red team operate? First of all, what did the red team see? They saw the gateway firewall, they saw the server firewall. We had numerous zero days and bad passwords and stuff, which we never even saw, guys. We never even got to do vulnerability assessment. So we're bricked there too. They saw Patel, we knew about that. They they had some other visibility. The file server was here. I don't see that they had the domain controller, so that's good news. Now with the power of this, we can look at what they did. All right, they, they host scan the internet. They found Glenn right off the rip and Isaiah. They looked at the firewall. They spear fished attacks successfully, okay? They got on the file server on turn oh one okay so the, the looks like they failed they failed the ransomware installation on the file server the first time around yeah and it looks like <clears throat> just so it, i guess clint so i'm reading this correctly my understanding is that the threat actor the simulation starts with the threat actors already in your environment that's what this is indicating to me yeah 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 so <clears throat> if you go to the very beginning everything from turn one to turn six is everything that happened prior to you starting the scenario when the numbers start over at one that's where your scenario started okay good to know good to know so it starts with the spear phishing already they're on the file server this would have been devastating y'all if we started the game and we're like hey good morning happy happy tuesday happy wednesday grab your coffee and then they're like hey the file server's ransomware that would be such a punch in the gut okay so glenn's machine gets ransomware just installed not activated Okay, they found some vulnerabilities and then Glenn got popped on turn two. We addressed that. Continue to try to get ransomware. You could see that they were doing it here. They started installing disruptive malware. By turn three, we're already hosed. Data's going out the door from the file server, which is why our PNL was getting hit so badly. I won't, I won't go continue on to this because we experienced it from our side. My point is that you can use this log probably for internal to the IT and InfoSec teams only, because I don't think management's really going to want this level of tactical detail. Well, and just so you know, so the, what you can do, and I think your settings are set to CV, CSV, so you won't get much value from downloading the report. Now you can save the report. Now, I think in your settings, it's set to CSV by default, but you we now have the option to save it and you can't change it from here, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Um, but you have the option to set your default file, uh, report format as HTML, and it, it's much more readable. And oh, it, that's it, fantastic. And basically, say, it saves everything out. It saves all the turns, the actions, whether they succeed or fail. It saves this all the data from this screen here, so it gives you everything. I like it. Let me uh, Let me just do this really quickly. So hopefully you guys found value out of today's exercise, whether you use the threat gen platform for doing tabletop exercises and facilitating those tabletop exercises. Um, you know, I, I, it, it's, that's, you know, great, but I hope you got value out of understanding a, how a tabletop exercise would actually be executed, how you could use the threat gen platform to basically facilitate it. So you don't have to do the heavy lifting and how a tabletop exercise would be executed, how you have those conversations with management, how you have those decision-making points on whether or not to call law enforcement, whether or not to pay the ransom, what are the thresholds? Guys, we make a lot of assumptions, myself, legal, executives, like 
we all make assumptions of like, oh yeah, you would just pay the ransom. Well, I don't know. Would you like, you have to operate collectively as a business and make decisions in concert with each other, or it's going to be a hot mess on fire. I say it all the time. You do not want to be dealing with a ransomware incident for the first time while it's happening for the first time. You want to step through simulations and talk through decision-making processes. So when the actual event occurs, you can chill out, right? So that's all I'll say about that. Clint, <clears throat> final thoughts? So a tabletop exercise, the most important thing is dialogue and discussion. It doesn't have to be high fidelity. It doesn't have to be technically detailed. What it does need to do is present scenarios, situations that engage all levels of the discussion at all levels of your company and makes you think about your IR procedures. You want to look for weaknesses in your IR procedures. You want to look for areas of indecision, areas where you don't know what to do. That's the purpose of an IR tabletop exercise, no matter what platform you're using. Red versus blue simply helps you facilitate that better, easier, and hopefully a little more entertaining. But at the end of the day, you need to be doing tabletop exercises more often, not once a year. You need to, because there's threats coming out quarterly. Yeah. If not sooner, every more often. So you need to be exercising now. Granted, yes, they have similar TTPs and things like that. But the reason you do a tabletop exercise is to root out all those areas of indecision and combat freezing and not knowing what to do. And then once you have that in your plan, you want to exercise it regularly. You basically doing add extra challenges, add extra uh, time restraints do stress inoculation. So those that's what a tabletop exercise is for. And 99% of the people out there are not using tabletop exercises effectively. Exactly. Exactly. And again, the, the, for me personally, like as a CISO and as a practitioner, like, of course I work for threat gen. So, but, but aside from that, the, the, the power of this is that you can redo it with high regularity. And because it's entertaining, people will want to play it regularly. So it's not just that it can be done quickly and easily. It's it's it can be done quickly and easily and it's engaging. You know, we had a software developer in chat say like this is pretty cool. Like I I'd, I'd be into this. We've had multiple people in chat say that they loved this. My first tabletop exercise, etc. So it it's a win-win-win. The organization improves, risk is reduced, and it's entertaining. It's not a drag. You're not like, "Oh my god, is it the 15th of the month? Every 15th, we have to do this stupid exercise. It's not that. It's like, oh, bro, like, are you going to the tabletop exercise? It was awesome last time. It's going to be fun. Okay, so that's all I'll say about that. I do want to uh, tell chat, listen, if you could do me a huge favor, I'm going to create a poll on LinkedIn on the ThreatGen channel, okay? Or the ThreatGen account. So go to LinkedIn, go to ThreatGen. I'm going to create a poll. I want to know, would you prefer, because we do this every Wednesday, would you prefer more tabletop exercises? We have a whole slew of different simulations that we can walk through. Would you prefer more tabletop? Would you prefer more me as the red, more me as the blue, or more uh, heads up competitive action? We have four different kind of uh, ways to play the game right now on stream, Clint. And since we're only doing it once a week, I would love to do more of whatever the community wants to consume. I think there's yeah. value in all of them. I think there's entertainment in all of them. There's educational value in all of them. So you, you let, <laughs> Joel, you let, <laughs> go ahead. Joel says all of the above, you know, and, and, and here's the thing, right? Um, you know, I think it would be a good idea to take the proportion of the community. We usually get hundreds of responses on our polls on threat gen, take the community responses and do them proportionally. Right. So like if most people say a, then we'll do a, you know, twice, you know, you know, we'll yeah. do A twice, uh, twice a month. Like A, and... B, A, C, A, D, A, B. Yeah. 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 Something like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B, A. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, that's an Easter egg in threat gen. The Konami true. code. There's an Easter egg in threat yeah. gen using the Konami code. This is true. So, um, just, uh, you know, the links are on the bottom below, but if you are interested in checking out Threat Gen Red versus Blue, if you're interested in playing the game, or if you're interested in actually having this tool for executing tabletop exercises in your environment, which you could literally do t today, like you could get it today and execute a tabletop tomorrow in your environment, 
Uh, go to threatgen.com for more information. I see that the threatgen.com is actually not on our little banner on the bottom. So that's something that we should remediate. But go to threatgen.com and you'll be able to get what you need there. Uh, or just reach out to me or Clint on social media and we will get you where you got to go. Huge value here on the platform. That's going to do it for us today. I'm Gerald Dozier. He's Clint Bow Dungeon. This has been Threat Gen Incident Response Tabletop in a Box. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned for next Wednesday's live stream. Thanks, everybody. Take care.